Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to be looking at the RAF Virtual Simulation Control Interface or SI. This tutorial presumes that you have downloaded the latest version of SI from the RAF Virtual Forums, installed it and are ready to continue. Presuming you do not have SI open, you have two ways of doing so. You can open it using the shortcut that will be placed on your desktop or by going to Start All Programs, RefVirtual.org, SI Simulation Control Interface. We're going to use the desktop shortcut. As you can see, SI has just opened. We have a number of features. We're going to have a quick look at them before we continue. First off, you can quit by using the file quit option. When you are logged in, you can use the display all aircraft map to have a look at a map showing all the current locations of every airframe in the RAF virtual fleet. And you can view the current version by looking here. In a later ver build, we will actually uh, be putting in a check which will look and see and let you know if you're running the latest version or not. But for the moment, check this version number against the forum version and it will let you know if you're up to date or not. Next we have our user login details, the status bar and the connector sim which is currently greyed out because we're not logged in. We have our user login panel just here and our user interaction panel on this side. The map which updates to reflect your air selected airframe and other items here and status messages down in this section down here. Now we're going to log in. To log in you use your standard RAF Virtual Adams password. You do this by typing RAF virtual, your RAF number and of course your password. You can click the remember my login details but there's a small bug at the moment that it appears it's not actually working. It's on the to fix list but these things take time. After you click login, so I will attempt to talk to the Atoms database. And after a short time, your screen will change to look like this. The initial page it brings you to is your user information screen. This shows you your current name, your rank, your total hours, the amount of night hours you've flown, your instructing hours, the total number of flights you've done. You can also see your current endorsements and when your last flight was, as well as your image of any awards that you've been awarded to date. At this point you can also connect SI to the SIM. We're not actually going to do this yet, we're going to take a step a little bit forwards, have a look at a couple of other features, then we'll come back to this. So. The next tab is Aircraft Booking and Task Selection. On this screen, we can select any of the squadrons that we are currently assigned to. For today's example, I'm going to choose 36 Squadron. On doing this, the Task Selection menu becomes available. I can select Get Squadron Tasks to bring up a view of all the current tasks available to 36 Squadron. So we can see that we have some Accordion, Okra, Pacific Assist, some General Squadron tasks and some training tasks available. You can see their ATO numbers, their departure and their arrival, the type of task they are, whether or not they're assigned and we can go in and have a look at the briefing. So let's take a look at a current mission here. Pacific Assist Mission, PA-153, 151, Echo, from, from Amberley to 
support the Villa humanitarian support and it's available. We'll click view briefing. At this point we get a menu which anybody who's used Adams will be familiar with. This is our current task briefing. It gives us all the information that we need to fly and we can accept the task. After a few moments we'll notice that this now says that it's assigned to me. It's updated over on this side as well and says that it's assigned to me. And we've got a few changes here. We can release the task back to the system or we can file the task. At the moment, if you try and file the task, it will tell you to go and do it using the old Adams interface. Over time this will change, but for the moment, task filing requires Adams to be used. For now, we're going to release this task back to the system. The other part here we can do is book an airframe. So we're going to look at 208 and have a look with where it is at the moment. So 208 is sitting at Port Villa. 209 is sitting at Dubai. Two ten is sitting currently by the looks of it at Brisbane. Two oh six is sitting at Amberley. Two oh seven is also in Dubai. Two oh eight we already know. Two two eleven well, my airframe is currently sitting in Bali. I decided to take a holiday and I haven't come back yet. Ed 209 is in Al Minhad at Dubai. So for the, this example we're going to select 208 actually no we'll select 206 at Richmond at Amberley. So if we zoom in here we can have a look. We can see where 208 6 is currently parked just here on the northern ramp at Amberley we can tell it we want to book this airframe after a few moments it'll tell us that we've booked and we need to release it before we can book another if we do attempt to book another airframe it will tell us that we currently have one booked we need to release it before we try to book another. This is to prevent any pilot, one pilot from grabbing more than one airframe at a time. So, the other item we can quickly look at before we connect to the fl to flight sim is the current RAF virtual map. And here we can see, as I said, 208 and 209, uh, 209 and 207 and their locations. All the RAAF airfields, including Air Naval Station Nara and Army Air Naval Base of Army Air Station. Oakley and we can see all the currently active airframes within the RAF virtual fleet that are on the ground and not booked or at least the last position of all of them all we can change this map over to a road view if we're after an easier view or an aerial mode without labels or the default aerial mode with labels clicking the close will bring us back to our main menu at this point we have an aircraft booked we're ready to hit flight sim so I've already got flight sim open I'm going to choose my 
C17. And I'm going to tell it that I want to load up at the airfield fairly close to where the airframe I want to pick up is. So in the case of this one, I'm just going to tell it that I just want to load up at Amberley. I don't care where at Amberley it puts me, I just want to be at Amberley. And I'm going to tell it I want to fly now. This is going to obviously bring me in at the ramp uh, on the runway. At this point I can connect to the simulation and you'll notice that I've got some extra data here. We've got some new simulator controls down here and if we look up here it says we're connected to flight sim and we have a look down here it gives us some information. For the most part, you can ignore most of this information at the moment. We're going to wait for my flight sim to load, so I'm going to actually pause until that's done. So, as you can see, flight sim's just finished loading me in. I'm in the C-17, sitting at the end of the runway here so if I went to an external view runway, three, three, flats, we're sitting at flats. runway 33 three. and so I, I want to tell it any information that's prudent so if I'm connected to a multiplayer server as a client so if I was connected to somebody else in multiplayer I'd tick this and of course if I was a passenger then I wouldn't want to move my aircraft but I'm neither, so I'm going to leave this like so. I'm going to tell Sai to move me to my aircraft. Sai's so just moved me to the position of 206. So, as you can see, this is where we are. And if we zoom in... It says we should be here. We look, we are here. At this point, I have one more thing I need to do, and then I just use flight sim and FSN and everything like normal. I tell it that I want to start the traffic services. So over the course of the next minute to or so, RAF's virtual application is going to spawn in all the traffic for Ambly and the like, based on where our aircraft currently are. So as we just saw, we just had a group of aircraft spawning up here. There'll be a group of Super Hornets spawning across here. And we're actually ready to go. We can do everything now like normal and not have to worry. Now, presuming that we've landed, we're go I'm going to move 206 slightly here. On taxiway, on taxiway. So I'm just going to slew slightly. Presuming we've landed, we're ready to release the aircraft back into the system. We come back over here, we tell it that we want to release the aircraft. Give it a few moments. It'll successfully release the aircraft. As you can see, have no, currently have no aircraft booked. 
And over in the course of the next minute or so, it'll update the traffic information and the aircraft that you've just released will appear. Let's say, for example, I no longer want to fly 206. I want to fly Super Hornet. Well, other than finding a Super Hornet I can fly, in this case I'm going to have a quick look at one squadron. By the looks of it, this bird is right here. I can book and then move. And you can see over there the C 17s loaded in. At the moment, there will be. a hornet still under me but again in a short time it'll have been removed and we won't have to worry about it so but for the moment we just want to release it back that is literally how you use Psy there's some other data in here which can be used um, we can use the experimental airdrop system. This will be gone into more detail elsewhere. And we can get a flight timer, which will update based on when we take off to when we touch the ground again. So if you, if you do a hard landing, it's not going to be 100% accurate if you bounce at the current time. Once you're done, disconnect from the sim. It'll tell you that if you've got your traffic system running that it's stopping it. And then it will disconnect from the flight from flight sim. At which point you can you're right to log out and quit Sci. That is literally how you use it. Thanks for watching. Any questions, feel free to ask a member of the senior leadership team or myself. Thanks.